Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we are going to talk about declarations and comments. Now originally I had planned to move on to the next big topic in this video, but I thought now is as good as time as any to tie up some loose ends. So let's talk about declarations first. Whenever we create a variable, we don't have to initialize it right away. Previously we created variables like this. We are not forced to do that. It's perfectly fine to declare the variable first, like this, and then assign a value to it later. Like this. Now with our current knowledge and abilities, this isn't really of much use to us, except for maybe organizing. But this will come in real handy once we start to deal with classes, methods and scope. So keep this in mind. But this is really useful when you want to do some calculations first and then assign a value to this variable based on the calculation. Let's get back to our very first example for this. As you can see here, I've declared the variables first. It's also possible to declare multiple variables in the same statement. I like to do this when I'm creating variables that are very close in context. It's done like this. All you have to do is separate your variables by a comma, right here. And like I said, you're not limited to two variables for this. You can declare however many you want in the same statement. So let's just add one for the fun of it. What you can do as well is initialize multiple variables in the same statement, just like this. And you don't have to initialize all of them. I can just leave number three as it is. Note, however, that it is considered bad practice to leave variables uninitialized. But for a program of this small size, it's fine. So let's just go ahead and calculate a little. Now we've done this before and this is pretty simple stuff to you right now. The good thing about declaring a variable beforehand though is the fact that we can use this variable in future calculations without having to create a new one. So check this out. I'll just copy and paste this because I'm lazy. So what's happening here? First I do a calculation as usual. I add the values of number 1 and number 2 together and store the result in the variable that we've created. And then I print it out to the screen. Now the next thing I do is I assign a new value to number 1, calculated a different result with the new number 1 and printed that out as well. And fair enough, we get two different results. Now check out what would have happened if we wanted to create a new variable in the stead of number 1. It wouldn't work we get an error saying that there already exists a variable called number 1. So if we wanted to perform a new calculation, we would have to create a whole new variable for that. And this is not the purpose of a variable, since its very name means that we can assign different values to it whenever we want. So let's clean up this mess. Now here's something interesting for you. In the first tutorial I made about variables, I told you that we had to make sure that the compiler knows what the variables mean before we use them. We can't calculate number 1 plus number 2 if we don't know what number 1 and number 2 are. But since we declared all of the variables up here, and this is why I didn't give number 3 a value yet, in theory we should be able to use number 3 in our calculations. The compiler shouldn't be able to give us an error concerning number 3 now, because we told it that number 3 is an integer. So let's test this out. Whoops. Looks like the compiler is smarter than we thought. Let's check out the error message. The local variable number 3 may not have been initialized. Well, he got us there, so we had better initialize it. 
let's just give it the value 5. Now be warned though, the compiler will notify you of these mistakes, but only in the local scope. You may remember I've been talking about scopes in one of the episodes. Scopes play a big part when it comes to variable declarations. And all this time, we've been working with the local scope of the main method, indicated right here by these two curly braces. Now I'm just mentioning this because I want to get you on edge a little. We will be working in our safe zone for quite a while, but there are dangerous lands ahead of us. So this is all for variable declarations for now. Let's move on to comments. There is not a lot to say about them. Here's what a typical comment looks like. A comment is preceded by two forward slashes, and then the text that you want to write. Now in a comment, you can write whatever you want, and typically, you want to describe what is going on within your program. Now this situation we got right here is pretty self-explanatory, it doesn't require comments. But I'm still gonna make a few just to show you the concept. So the first thing we do in our program is declaring variables. So let's write that. Now the next step is to perform a calculation and print it out to the screen. And finally, we change some of the values and perform a new calculation. Now what I did here was complete overkill. First of all, comments should be precise and describe what a program is supposed to be doing. Not every single line of code needs to be commented. Well-designed code is already going to tell the user what it's going to do. This can be achieved, for instance, by giving meaningful names to your variable. When we just perform simple calculations, names like number one, number two, and result are pretty fitting. So there's no need to write adding the values of number one and number two together and storing them in result. I mean, it's right there in the code. In larger and more complex programs, however, it is very useful to have a concise description of what is going on. Now that reminds me of something that I wanted to address, but let's finish comments first. What we have here is a single line comment. And yes, as you have guessed, there is a multi-line comment as well. Here's how it looks. Now, as you have seen, Eclipse was nice enough to auto-complete this for us. A multi-line comment starts with a forward slash and a star symbol, then each consecutive line is preceded by one star symbol. And if you want to finish your multi-line comment, you have to use a star and a forward slash. Now before we end this video, and before I forget again, here's something I wanted to tell you about naming variables real quick. And that is we have a few restrictions when it comes to naming variables. Here's an example. Variable names can never start with a number, or else you will get this kind of error. As we've seen before though, we can use numbers inside and at the end of variable names. Variable names also cannot contain spaces. If you want to give your variable a name that consists of more than one word, I advise you to use an underscore to connect the words, or to use camel case. So either do it like this, or do it like this. I prefer this because I feel like it makes it a bit easier to read, but you are free to do whatever you like. Finally, variable names cannot contain any Java-specific keywords. So for instance, That won't work, because int is already embedded into the Java language. Now one last note on this, it is convention to start out variable names with a small letter. 
So while something like this is very possible, it is preferred to use small letters instead. But alas, this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you did, feel free to subscribe so you won't miss out on new videos. See you next time!